Have you ever experienced a numeric explosion when training a model? The infamous NAN or not a number error. Many AI engineers have. They're rather annoying errors causing the entire training to stop. Now, imagine if this happened in the context of an autonomous vehicle or mission critical AI agent or robot. You may literally hit a wall and that would be catastrophic. Many of these errors are caused by an unstable model or bad training data. FP8 and other small floating point formats are increasingly popular, but they easily overflow and they require special attention to not cause explosions. Corrupted training data can cause similar issues. But sometimes the cause for the explosions is elsewhere. It's a hardware fault. They are called silent data corruptions or SDC in short. Oh, by the way, my name is Cyril and I am an engineer at NVIDIA. Today, my colleague David and I will talk to you about these silent hardware errors in the context of large-scale training, what we've learned about them, and what we're doing to mitigate these errors. Now David is going to give us some context. Thanks, Cyril. SCCs are not a new problem. We've been dealing with them for decades, going back to the 60s. The first error-correcting memory was meant to address them, and the radiation-hardened components that went into the Apollo missions did the same thing but they've become a lot more prevalent in recent years as data centers grow in size and as chips become denser. Nowadays, we have data centers that have 100,000 GPUs in them, while at the same time, we have Blackwell B200s that have 200 billion transistors and do 20 petaflops of compute per second. That's 20 million billion floating point operations per second. This junction of density and scale and speed provides ample opportunity for SDCs to occur even in data centers. But as GPUs and compute become more ubiquitous in our day-to-day -day lives, showing up in our cars, our interactions with chatbots, recommendation systems, the possible consequences of these SDCs become much more diverse. What makes them particularly difficult to wrangle with is that they're relatively rare and pretty hard to catch. The majority of these errors have very little effect on final calculation results, and therefore they cannot really be observed. These errors are harmless, but they make it very challenging to know the true spread of SDCs throughout our ecosystem. A small fraction of SDCs fall through the cracks and have some kind of effect. These effects range from subtle perturbations in training from which we can recover to the catastrophic numerical explosions that Cyril mentioned earlier. Some analyses suggest that fewer than 1% of SDCs actually cause such catastrophes. But the truth of the matter is, at the current state of research, we understand very little of what SDCs do in the real world. Making matters worse, they're inherently stochastic and complex, making it impossible to predict these errors and their downstream outcomes. A lot of that complexity finds its roots in the elaborate physics and intricate architecture of the GPU silicon, making it challenging even to model the defects that lead to SDCs. This has limited most industry analyses to black box studies looking at the outside in of the GPU but we at NVIDIA built a lot of them, and we have deep insight into the sort of things which cause SDCs. This puts us in a unique position to tackle this problem end to end in order to benefit the rest of the industry. I'm going to hand it back to Cyril to walk us through the journey of an SDC, starting at the level of the quantum physics, going up through the math, and then finally landing in the AI model itself. Cyril. Let's embark on our journey. It all starts with quantum physics. Transistors are the basic building blocks of all chips. They carry and process sedimentary bit information. At a very basic level, transistors are quantum physics devices. To be clear, we're not talking about quantum computing here. However, at the scale of today's transistors, they are subject to quantum effect, meaning that certain probabilistic behaviors become significant. This makes them vulnerable to certain perturbations to their environment, such as high energy particles, voltage, temperature, and so forth. When that happens, the transistor can respond more slowly or can become temporarily unstable, jumping back and forth between the open and closed state. Broadly speaking, we distinguish between two types of, of SDCs. Uh, there are transient SDCs, which are random, isolated error caused by strikes of high energy particles, such as cosmic rays. And then there are permanent SDCs, which are repeating or intermittent errors caused by a variety of factors, including aging and voltage. All this is fundamentally non-deterministic. Moving up to the next layer of a stack. Transistors are combined into large and complex structures to implement GPU functions. This includes 
cache memory, register files, tensor cores, and so forth. So the question is, how, how vulnerable are those functions to, to SDCs? Well, it really depends on a variety of complex factors. It, it depends in particular on the timing and the site of a fault. Many faulty bits are not tracked by downstream logic and end up vanishing without a trace. Others are impactful. So for that reason, circuits are often hardened. A well-known such protection is ECC. Memory is today uh, protected most of the time with ECC, which corrects up to one-bit errors and detects up to two-bit errors. However, these protections are expensive and they take a valuable space on silica. For that reason, they're not always practical for compute logic. When a faulty transistor does cause an execution error, the blast radius can vary enormously. The fault may manifest itself as a tiny math error on the sixth decimal of a calculation, or it may cause that same calculation to be off by a billion, or even worse, be flagged incorrectly as incomputable. In other situations, the fault causes a GPU to reach an invalid state and just hang there. The fault has now jumped out of a silicon and entered the realm of software. As we just mentioned, a fault can take multiple forms. In the case of a hang, a watchdog is likely to detect the problem and throw an exception. At that point, the fault is no longer silent. Calculation errors, on the other hand, are more likely to go unnoticed. So let's focus on that. The math behind AI is mostly based on linear algebra. And matrix multiplication is a basic building block of, of that math. It's often referred to as GEM for general matrix multiplication. They happen to be one of the most expensive, compute-wise, basic primitives used by, by models, which makes them extremely vulnerable to SDCs. So gems are implemented in low-level libraries using highly optimized CUDA kernels to take advantage of tensor core and their computational power. Those gems end up being broken down into long sequences of matrix multiply add instructions. So in the case of small, small errors, small initial errors, they tend to vanish, those long, long summations, because of a limited precision of floating point. However, when the initial error is large, it may propagate or even explode, particularly in the case of a nan or int result. So we're seeing here that SDCs propagate through jam in, in complex ways. It depends on the initial error. It also depends on the data surrounding the error. All this effectively makes the outcome unpredictable. And we're finally reaching the final layer of a stack, the AI model. Models essentially consist of complex network of interconnected gems and activation function. So what happens to our SDC that has survived the journey so far can come out of a gem and is reaching the model layer? Well, once again, it depends on many complex factors. First of all, models are intrinsically resilient to noise. Quantization, for example. Some models can be trained on a single digit of, of precision. Actually, small errors may even help, help models. Drop out layers, accelerate training by injecting random zeros. LNM temperature, improve the quality of prediction by injecting random noise. Some of that resiliency can be traced back to specific activation layers using transformers, namely layer norm, softmax, and causal mask, right? those functions may attenuate the impact of, of outliers, and in some cases, even stop entirely the propagation of explosions. But that's not the case of all. In some cases, the error does make it through. Some, some regions of a network are not protected. The logit layer, for example, at the end of the LLM that converts embeddings back into tokens isn't protected. And when the error happens in a backward pass, it may impact gradients and, and derail the training. So some analysis from simulation data suggests that under 1% of SDCs lead to numeric explosions in training LLM. So to summarize, we have followed the journey of an SDC from the initial physical perturbation in silicon all the way to the model. We've seen that many of these errors vanish as they move out the stack, but some do make it and are visible, observable at the model level, either in form of noise that may be actually even very hard to see and is easily recovered, all the way to, to, to catastrophic numeric explosions. So we're seeing how 
complex and insidious as GCs are, yet they are inevitable. So how should we tackle them? What we've learned over time at NVIDIA is that no single approach is going to fully address a problem. So we have gradually developed a multi-tiered strategy consisting of both proactive and reactive measures and multiple successive lines of defense across the entire life cycle of a GPU from birth at the factory to end of flight of a data center. Let's dive into it. Devin, back to you. Thanks again, Cyril. Let's walk through the strategy. So first, we make a great deal of efforts to make sure that defective GPUs never leave the factory. We don't want them to get to the field and cause what we call a reliability incidence by causing an SDC and crash in training or causing some, some issues. We do this screening by effectively sending the GPUs to the gym. Newly born chips are taken, placed in really large ovens, and they run advanced stress tests while they're literally being baked at 125C for hours. This helps to proactively identify many GPUs that have intrinsic defects, which would fail under high load during ordinary usage for one reason or another. However, this doesn't catch all issues. Some factors are only observed in data centers and may cause GPUs to fail down the road. We address these so-called test escapes by validating the GPUs in the field. Our next line of defense takes place in the data center during the initial bring up and validation phase. We run another batch of screen tests on fully configured and connected clusters, ensuring that the GPUs can sustain the intensive training workloads that we expect them to run in production. This includes some benchmarks to verify the system is operating at full performance and burn-in tests to ensure that the performance remains stable over hours and days of continuous use. These initial exercises are another proactive measure to catch defective parts before they have a chance to wreak havoc production. But this data center screening is also not sufficient. GPUs age, and so we have to continually monitor the health of our data centers and the GPUs inside. Our third line of defense is to continually check for SDCs and other errors in the live data center. Once a GPU has entered production, we have a variety of diagnostic tools to check its health. You can think of these as daily cluster calisthenics. One interesting use of these tools is to perform data center screens. The goal here is to proactively identify defective GPUs that may have fallen through the cracks of the previous stress tests or that have become defective due to aging and overall wear. The screening solution that we are internally operating at NVIDIA has tens of thousands of diagnostic jobs on GPUs in our data centers every single day. These are short jobs, typically between 5 to 15 minutes, and running hundreds of individual tests meant to exercise the mathematical and memory managing hardware contained within the GPUs. By squeezing these short jobs in between the much larger enterprise scale jobs, we can screen entire data centers on an opportunistic basis without taking capacity away from our users. We're currently running this screening tool internally at NVIDIA for research purposes, but we're hoping to share interesting results from it really soon. The next line of defense takes place the moment an SCC happens. All the measures we've talked about so far intend to catch defective GPUs before they fail and cause harm. The goal here is to catch and mitigate SDCs at runtime, when they happen, and before they have a chance to propagate and cause problems in downstream training. One way to do this is to detect numeric explosions, such as infinite and not a number loss or gradients during training. When an error is detected, the training step that triggered the error is rerun on a different GPU to determine whether the error is reproducible. If the error cannot be reproduced on the other GPU, we can safely attribute it to an SDC. Otherwise, the cause of the error is not a hardware fault. It could be an unstable model or bad training data, but this disambiguation process allows us to better identify and thus better address the true source of the issue. This feature has been added to Megatron, NVIDIA's open source framework for large language model training, and is currently available for public use. But as we talked about before, many SDCs vanish entirely in the model or produce outcomes far less noticeable than a full numeric breakdown. We're working on another more sensitive detection method to catch more of these subtle SDC manifestations. This approach uses specialized CUNA kernels to perform a checksum verification on the result of every gem on every single matrix multiply. This is based on the simple fact that the additions and multiplications that make up the gem are themselves associative and commutative. And so various math goes into this to make sure that all of the numbers line up. In a perfect mathematical world, the input and result checksums would match exactly. However, floating point multiplication inherently introduces some round-off error. 
So the verification logic must detect a significant difference in the checksum. When it does this, it triggers a rerun of the gem on another GPU to verify the correctness of the result. In the case of a mismatch, an exception is raised. This approach is estimated to detect approximately 15% of SCCs in LLM training. This provides greater protection against SCCs in critical computations at a small performance penalty of only a couple percent. These specialized kernels are currently in development at NVIDIA, and we hope to release them soon, so keep an eye out. But we've set up these multiple lines of defense to catch defective GPUs before they fail, and then when they fail. There's one last opportunity to learn from our bad GPUs after they cause failure, and call them to reduce the blast radius of the failures that they have caused. SDCs may manifest themselves indirectly via a variety of different symptoms, very ambiguous job failures, incorrect math, strange hardware exceptions. And when we consider each of these in isolation, they might not tell us very much about the underlying problem. Again, it could be an application problem or a data problem, but when we consider the whole constellation of symptoms across the entire history of the node, we can pull back this fog and disambiguate such symptoms, flagging and removing defective GPs quickly and accurately. For example, many memory access exceptions are caused by an application bug. Some are SECs. If the same GPU experiences repeat exceptions, it suggests that that specific GPU may have issues and is deserving of a more intensive examination. Each of the lines of defense that I've walked you through, from factory testing to functional verification to failure analytics, offers us an opportunity to learn from our GPUs every single step of the way. I'm going to hand it off to Cyril to walk us through the last bit of our talk, running you through the philosophy of how we're going to tackle these in the future. Cyril? Thanks, David. All of these defenses aim at identifying and weeding out defective GPUs, therefore improving the overall health of data centers. But there is another indirect benefit to this approach. By deploying diagnostic and detection tools in data centers at scale, we collect valuable insights about the failure observed, their types, frequencies, and so forth. We then incorporate these precious learnings into the design of future GPU architectures for the benefit of the entire ecosystem. This is a virtuous, self-enforcing cycle from foundry to industry and back, with each iteration improving on the previous. OK, let's recap. Silent data corruptions are increasingly inevitable at scale, as data centers are growing and we continue to push the boundaries of physics. It is a very complex area, and it is also very poorly understood what two effects they have. We at NVIDIA take this issue very seriously, and we're uniquely positioned to tackle the problem thanks to our deep expertise in GPUs. We've devised a multi-tiered approach to tackle the problem based on multiple lines of defense. Some of these solutions already exist and are available to the ecosystem. Others are in development and will be gradually released. All right, thank you. We're looking forward to future iterations of this virtual cycle. Thank you for listening.